one more critical event had to happen. The final piece in the jigsaw. Over two million years ago, our ancestors changed. A single genetic mutation in our jaw muscle allowed our skulls to expand and our brains to grow far larger than our ape cousins. But one further change was the final key to the development of modern human beings. It was discovered here at Oxford University in England. In 1996, researchers were studying three generations of one family. Sixteen of them had a severe speech disorder. Um, you've got like Verhain uh, tests, um, Mopri tests, um, go to the hospitals to have um, a brain scan. They couldn't produce the delicate movements of tongue and lips that would let them speak clearly. Studying their DNA, the researchers found they all had the same genetic defect. In modern humans, a gene called FOXP2 is essential for speech. It's believed that sometime in the past, a mutation in FOXP2 helped create the neural connections needed for the movements of our lips and tongues. But none of the 16 family members in the study had this mutation. Now they knew what to look for, the researchers tried to work out when the FOXP2 gene changed in our ancestors. They found it mutated as recently as two to three hundred thousand years ago. So our early ancestors who split away from the chimps and bonobos five million years ago probably couldn't talk. It would be millions of years before our ancestors gained the ability to speak. It could be the appearance of the Fox P2 mutation coincided with the emergence of a new species in an area of sub-Saharan Africa. Homo sapiens, or more simply, you and I. Armed with this new linguistic weapon, Homo sapiens poured out of Africa into Europe and Asia. This ability to communicate would drive us forward. We shared knowledge with each other. We explained and taught, copied and learned. Each generation built on the knowledge of the last. If you just look at human history, we started with very simple technologies and simple social institutions, for example, and now we have very complicated ones. And so we've called this the ratchet effect. Each generation of children learns whatever they're exposed to and then maybe some innovation is made then the next generation of children learns the innovated the new version and then maybe there's a new innovation and the next generation learns a new version human cultures can ratchet up in complexity over time and children get them for free our language became complex our technology advanced our culture richer we were propelled in leaps and bounds into a different league from the other animals. The primitive forest ape became a modern human. In many ways we are still similar to the apes. Tiny differences in our DNA give us the things that make us special. Brain power, language, complex tools, and our ability to share goals and work together. But the great apes are special too. They have incredible physical strength, fast reactions and a phenomenal short-term memory. Both of us are adapted for our own environment. But one difference stands out from all the rest. Our development has made us incredibly successful. There are now over 6.6 .6 billion of us on the planet. Compared to the great apes, an astonishing contrast emerges. The number of people born in just two days, some 700,000, is greater than the number of all the great apes in the world. We share most of our DNA with them. But the tiny amount we don't share makes a world of difference.